and placed on a rock. Now, over the past couple of years, the people who have been reporting about Agenda 21, well, we've been told that we wear tinfoil hats and it doesn't exist and we're stupid and we are all of the acronyms that you can possibly think of because the only thing that can stop communism is the truth. And rather than report the truth, they choose to demonize the person because they have no basis or foundation for what they're saying. So here's the book that doesn't exist. It's 40 chapters, 300 pages of absolute total control of every aspect of human activity based on the environment. Why the environment? Well, in the 30s, the Carnegies got together and they decided that part of their plan to be to control the population, control the people. First, they had to have all the money, then they had to have all the power, and then they would get the control. They got together on an island off of Georgia called Jekyll Island, and they started phase one of implementing this lie into America. How did they do that? Well, they created what we are now suffering with, which is called the Federal Reserve Bank. Now, remember what I just said? Remember the lie? The Federal Reserve Bank is not federal, it's not a reserve, and it's not a bank. Yet, we the people, thought that it was. And that was the first big lie. And that lie and everything thereafter was perpetuated with the same goal by the same group of families. There were 13 families. And these families made up what has now become the banking cartel and they control the monetary system now of the world. And in our, I won't say, uh, in, in, the, in the wickedness of the president, Woodrow Wilson, in the middle of his lame duck session on Christmas Eve, he passed the Federal Reserve Act because he knew that if he told the American people what this was, it would not happen. And ever since then, Every egregious policy that we have had has been passed in the lame duck session in Congress. And they have been passed by Democrats and Republicans. Because this problem is not a partisan issue. This is an American issue. And it doesn't matter which party we choose. The head of the snake is the same. They are communists. And when I realized that, I said, I am not going to be politically correct anymore. Not that I ever really was. But I have decided I am no longer politically correct. And therefore, they lie. And when I go to commissioner meetings now, and I see them lying, I stand up and I face the audience. And I don't have to be nasty. And I don't have to be disrespectful. But I do have to remind them that they're lying. So let's take a look at this lie because unless you understand what's in this book and what this plan is all about, it's very difficult to fight against it. And that's what they are counting on. How do I know that? Because we all grew up in the time of don't talk about politics and religion. First thing. Why did they say that? Because they don't want us to talk about politics and religion. Because they knew if we spoke about it, we would be appalled at what they were saying. So they used wonderful, fantastic cliches that resonate to get their message across when in reality they are doing exactly the opposite. We have today a decision to make. We are either going to be one nation under God or one nation under the United Nations. What's the difference? Well, to me, big difference. To many of our kids, 
They have no idea. And all of this started. Let's take a little advance forward. Now we are in between World War I, World War II, and the socialist educators, because many of them were Jewish and Christian, were kicked out of Germany. Well, they were so wonderful, they came here. And they infiltrated our colleges. And they didn't come here and embrace America. They came here and said, we will transform America into socialism. Now, I keep on saying we and they, so let's reference that first so we understand who this is, what this is all about. From estimates that we have gathered, there are approximately 10,000 people that belong to different organizations, such as the Bilderberg, the Club of Rome, the Trilateral Commission, the Commission on Foreign Relations, that's the CFR, and the Organization. And if you go look up any of those organizations, Google those organizations, look and see who belongs to those organizations, and then go back in time and listen to your words. You will be called as I was. And now they feel they are in the end game of their advancement, and they are now out in the open. So they had a coming out. What they did not expect was resistance, because they thought there will never be resistance because they captured our children. Our children are too dumb to fight back. We, on the other hand, are the last generation of people that had a complete, factual, classic American education. After the 50s, after the, excuse me, after the 60s, education in America was ne never the same. And our children today, and our grandchildren tomorrow, now believe that the government will take care of them for the rest of their lives. So, we have a choice. We have a choice. Will we be individuals with our individual liberty and freedom? Or, will we, will we be part of the group? Nothing special, listen to Obama. No exceptionalism, constantly making apologies, because the group can never exceed to what one person can exceed to because communism, Marxism, socialism, all the isms, communism, socialism, Marxism, progressivism, they're all the same. They just arrive there, they may start out differently, <coughs> they all arrive in the same place, they all wind up as communists. What that means is that no one will ever get past the spot about being able to have anything better than anyone else because everything must be equal. The goals of agenda you can go back. Go back. The goals or the start of agenda twenty one really started in the fifties when Eisenhower Gee, I thought he was a really good guy until I started reading about him. Well, his brother Milton was a communist, and in 1958 he sent a commission to Russia to study education in Russia because they were trying to figure out how the Russians created scientists. So they went to the Russian schools, and they came back, and they made a report. And that report was, if you take a child, almost from cradle to grave, you can create, you can mold that child into an individual who will be satisfied to work for the state as long as you entertain them, fill their heads with social garbage, and do not educate them. And that's what we have going on in our education today. And there isn't any amount of money 
that will change anything. And that is a distraction. Money is a distraction. Choice is a distraction. Class size is a distraction. The only thing that will change education would be to bring back a classical, factual, American education. Period. And that will produce the most brilliant kids on the planet. And that's what they don't want. So therefore, education has changed. And I'm going to tell you how in a couple of minutes. I was a teacher, I was a dean, and I was an administrator in a ghetto in Brooklyn. My kids were in junior high. Most of them were much taller and bigger than I was. I used to request the worst class in the school, and I taught math and science. And my kids, in a classroom of 38 students, hot, sweaty because there was no air conditioning, with old books, thank God we still had the old books, used to stand on stage at the end of graduation and get awards coming from the worst class in the school. Why? Because everyone has an inherent desire to be exceptional, to stand out, to be different, to prove themselves. And if we take that away, they act that. So we give them drugs, or we put them in a social program, or we do other things to them rather than educating them in their path to make them exceptional. <clears throat> Education is supposed to be, and our founding fathers agreed, that the education of Americans should be to provide all Americans with the basic tools of reading, writing, math, logic, reason, and critical thinking, civics, government, and history, that would allow them to make the choices to be exceptional in their lives. Because they felt that if sec exceptional people were created and got together with other exceptional people, we would have an exceptional country. And they were right. And today we don't do that. So what we are doing to our children is making them molded into one size she fits all, and when they try to express themselves, we squash them down. And so we provide them with social programs to take the place of education. Girl Harlem Brundtland was the crafter of sustainable development. She coined that phrase, sustainable development. What does that mean? Well, it means the development of society that meets the needs of the present society without compromising the needs of future society to meet their own needs. What does that mean? <laughs> That's the problem with the majority of your information. It does not make sense. Why on earth would we want to not make lives better for our children? Why would we want to touch nothing so that they have the same thing that we have. If we did that, we still would be riding around in horse and buggies, and we would still be out on the land with our plows and cattle. America, we believe, it is our job, it is our duty to make, our, make life better for our children so that they, in turn, will have it easier to make life better for their children and that they can learn from us. So if we teach them nothing, they will wind up in the same place. And that's what this is all about. A lot of garbage teaching nothing. Using a lot of fancy words, costing gazillions of dollars, because that's the other goal. Money, power, and control. Harvey Rubin brought to us, thank you, Marco Rubio, he appointed this communist. And why can I call him a communist? Because he says communist things. 
when the people in his county, Miami-Dade, came to him because Durham, that's the Department of Environmental Resource Management in Florida, in order to steal land, they use our laws. So they decided they wanted a particular area in the outskirts of the Everglades, and they drove around and they said, wetlands, 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 to 1,800 acres of land. And they said to the people on those wetlands, your land is now wetlands, you must take everything off. You may not have anything on your land. We will allow you to stay there and pay taxes, but you cannot have your anything. You can't have your ranch, you can't have your farm, you can't have your nursery. And many of these people have been living there for 30 years. They went to court, they went to their town, and they said, how is our property that we have had title to for 30 years, title cleared, no designation of wetlands, how did it become wetlands? The clerk said, I don't know. It's not listed as wetlands. The Army Corps of Engineers did not have it listed as, as wetlands. Durham took it upon themselves to call it wetlands. And when these people went to Harvey Rubin to ask for his help, his answer was, individual rights will have to take a back seat for the good of the collective. He's a communist, and he's in our government. And not only does he work in our government, but he also works for the United Nations. Who's minding that store? Since when can our elected officials do something as unconstitutional, A, by working with a foreign entity, and B, working with a program that's going to steal the land from their own people. They don't care about the people. To them, people are meaningless. The death of one is a tragedy. The death of millions is a statistic. That's their mentality. Maurice Strong. Maurice, he's a really cool guy. He's the one that wrote this book. Maurice is an oil billionaire. So what did he do? Fossil fuels are bad. Fossil fuels are evil. Fossil fuels cannot be used. Why? Because he doesn't want competition. So it's easier to demonize something and to take it out of the equation and say that it is against the environment because you're crazy if you want to harm the environment. So they will attack you if you want to harm the environment. But Maurice, who made his billions and continues to do so, is making oil for three. Their goal is to take down the American economy and to destroy us. And they say so very often. They follow their leaders who lie also. They started out lying. When you start out with a lie, it's hard to make it into the truth. Marx and Lenin said, do whatever means is necessary to come to power. Sound familiar? Lie, cheat, steal. And we got him in office. He blatantly lied. They will look you in the eye and lie to your face. And to me, nothing was more evident than last week listening to them in the um, on C-SPAN in the, in the Senate discussing the law of the sea treaty. The law of the sea treaty will take all of our oceans and all of our navigable waters, our rivers, our streams, and put them under the control of the United Nations. In addition, we will have to ask permission and get permits from the United Nations. And when oil is discovered or some resource is used, half of the profit will go to the United Nations and we will be charged with giving our technology to third world countries. And we have senators standing on the Senate floor and saying, we cannot exist unless we participate 
in the law of the sea treaty. That is disgraceful. A huge lie. Um, here's one of the big lies, and I brought this one with me so you can see. Let's say that this is the ocean. Well, in South Florida, there is a group going around to four counties, and it's called the Southeast, Southeast Climate Consortium. And they have gone around to the four southern counties, and they are convincing the people that if we don't do something about man-made global warming, which we, now, which we know is a lie, that the oceans will rise four to twenty feet. <laughs> so when I go to their meetings, I bring my cup of water, and I fill it with ice, and I say, here, we have a glacier, a little bit of ice on the top, which is the way glaciers usually are. So what you are telling me is that when this ice melts, it's going to spill all over the floor and go all over the table because that's what's going to happen, right? Well, the next time your grandkids or your kids tell you, because that's what they're being told and indoctrinated in school, you try this with them. Take a glass of ice. This is up at the two, two cup mark. We're going to put it down and by the end, Let's see if the ice has overflowed. Well, your right physics says it can happen. Unfortunately, guess what's not taught in school? Physics. Now you get the picture, folks? This is why things are being left out. This is why things are being replaced. Because they feel intelligent people require more resources, and that means less for them. So therefore, if they make us dumb, we'll be happy with what they give us and grant us. And now in America today, 47 million people are getting just that. Okay, global warming, well, not only is it not a lie, but if you remember what I said before, if they are talking about warming, what's really going to happen? It's going to get very cold. Because the real scientists have discovered that the sun, which is the single biggest uh, performer for our climate, than anything in the universe. Man has nothing. Um, it was explained to me that if I took a pin, if I took a string and went around the circumference, went around the equator, and I took a pin and I dropped it on that string, that's about as much influence that man has over the climate. And yet we are being controlled by this climate and being told that it is our pollutants that are causing global warming. And we have to be taxed for it. And that's the key word, taxed for it. And the lie perpetuates. And this is what our children are learning. And they are learning that man is the enemy of the earth. It's all man's fault. And worse than that, it's all America's fault. Carbon dioxide. Here's another one that you can do with your kids when they come in and they tell you that evil carbon dioxide. I said this was one of my commissioners. <coughs> We're sitting and I'm telling him about this and I could see his eyes rolling around in his head and I said, let me ask you a question. you believe carbon dioxide is toxic and we're going to have to implement the same plans that they're going to put in Miami-Dade and tax everybody and have carbon credits? Is, is that what, what you think is happening? Carbon dioxide is, it, is toxic? And he says, oh yeah, it's a dangerous gas. So I looked at him and I said, could you do me a favor? He said, yeah. And I said, you see that coat that's on your desk? Would you take a big gulp for me? So he took a big gulp. And I sat there. What's the matter, Karen? What are you staring at? 
And I said, I'm waiting for you to die because you just drank a whole bunch of carbon dioxide. <laughs> and he said, I looked at the can and he said, it's carbonated water. Oh my God. This is in our legislator. He is a representative that we voted for. No wonder why they can get all of these things. So we have, like I said before, thousands of programs, thousands of ideas that are going out to millions of people. Everybody with a little piece that eventually puts this egregious puzzle together. The, the biggest lie that they will tell you is that only the United Nations is capable of providing a plan to save the planet. And at that point, I usually ask, okay, the United Nations has been in, in the United Nations since 1946, and to my estimation, we Americans have probably given at least a trillion dollars, if not more, to the United Nations. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Then why do we still have poverty? There's usually no answer at that. And then I say, let me ask you a question. If you, I'm sorry, I can't see your name. Corey. Corey had a tragedy, and the community was going to help Corey. Should the community go and give me money? To give him money, to give him money, to give him money, to give him money, to give her money, to maybe get something to Corey. Or should the community get together and give the money to Corey? Would we not have been better than just taking that trillion dollars and going to one of these countries and actually doing something instead of giving it to the United Nations so they can drive around in their fancy cars and jets and planes, etc., etc., and tell us that we are using too much carbon. Again, why am I telling you this? Because it's a lie and because it does not make sense. And what we have been coached to do is become the silent majority. Why are we the silent majority? Because they don't want us to talk. So they made up a name. And we follow the suit because we're good people. So we have a major problem as conservatives because we are not used to doing what I'm doing. The enemy of communism is education and conversation. And unless we do that, we will lose this country. And it does not mean that it's just because Obama would or would not get elected. It depends on those people that are going to be sitting in the Senate and the House. Because if we fill them up with the same people that we have right now, guess what we're going to get? Same thing. Death of a slower amount. Same death. We wind up in the same place. It just will take us a little bit longer to get there. Unfortunately, we never expected this. And our job has just started. And this election makes our job just started. And it has to start local, <clears throat> as well as the state, and as well as federal. And I can tell you, after working with the state, our state is more corrupt than the federal government. And I didn't think that was possible. But it is. We have a group of lobbyists who write our laws, and when we, the people, go and talk to our legislators, they say, oh, lobbyists? Lobbyists. Money. Money. Therefore, our laws are getting written to support the lobbyists. If we don't take charge, shame on us. This is the truth about what's going on in the climate. And as I said before, uh, after spending the weekend with John Casey, who's a scientist, who works with a team of world-renowned world scientists, now there are over 30,000 that have real scientists, not guys with letters at the end of their name that mean anything, 
real scientists who actually perform experiments and do things, 30,000 of them have, in different parts of the world, let me show you the way this works. In order to come up with a global warming scam, a group of, we'll call them pseudoscientists, went to the United Nations, sat in a room like this, and the premise, the conclusion, was put on the board. And the conclusion was, man controls the climate and is responsible for polluting it, making global warming. Now all you scientists sit with your computers and figure out how we can get there. How can you get there? The only way you can get there is by lying, because the premise is a lie. Now, the way real science and real education works is, we have a premise that says, what can we expect with our climate? You have the scientists that sit in a room, gathering data, making tests, putting information together, and then, oh my God, 30,000 scientists came up with the same conclusion. That's reality. And their conclusion was, aside from the fact that we know that it's the sun, but by some studying sunspots, and some studying ice core, and some studying rocks, they all came up with the same conclusion. That climate is cyclical, it's a 206 year cycle. It goes warm and then it gets cold. And we have ended the warm phase. We have begun the cold phase. So what they are saying is, while our government is telling us about global warming, we need to pay attention to reality, which is global cooling. And if you think back about 206 years ago, what was happening? It was about the time of the French Revolution. And one of the problems of the French Revolution was the cold. The, war, the ice was so thick that they could walk across the Thames. <laughs> While we are being shown pictures of how hot it is in the Midwest, did anybody look to see what's going on in Europe or any place else? Unprecedented cold. We are in an anomaly in the United States. We had a La Nina and that altered the wind pattern. However, that does not alter the fact that we will be going into unprecedented cold. And as a result of that, when the sun contracts and shrinks, it's a ball of gas. It expands when it gets bigger. Now it's going through what they call it the hibernation phase. It's going to last about 60 years. The temperature in America will be approximately 5 to 7 degrees less than what it is now. Thank God we are in Florida. <laughs> but think about what is going to happen to the crops to our food. And where is our government? Well, that's where this comes in. Remember I said they talk the opposite? Well, they're busy telling us about global warming. Why? Because part of this says the Earth must be depopulated to between 500 million and a billion people. So if I don't tell you that we're going to have massive earthquakes, and I don't tell you that those earthquakes are going to lead to volcanoes, and if I don't tell you that there is a possibility that one of the volcanoes could block the sun for a year, what are you going to eat? Oh, you'll become a statistic. And this is what these people feel about us. And everything that I'm telling you can be found on agenda21today.com, and it's all in your folders. And what it is is a search engine that will link you to the actual documents of everything that I'm telling you.
So there wasn't enough time to do that here, but it's all there. Okay, next. This is all about money and power. It has nothing to do with green energy. Why do you think green energy, which by the way, is not new? It has been tried for the last 60 years, if not more. Why has it become so important now? Because it is a mechanism to steal money. Period. Why? Communism. Agenda 21 calls for the redistribution of wealth. What does that mean? I'm going to take money from the American people and put it in some stupid company, and I don't care if it works or it doesn't work, but those guys are my friends, and they'll vote for me, and they'll donate to my campaign, so I'm going to give them money. We'll give them a grant. We'll give them a subsidy. I don't care what their oil prices are going to be, because they'll necessarily skyrocket, and they'll go rah, rah, rah for green energy. In the meantime, America has more oil resources I was with a gentleman yesterday, my partner on my radio show. His name is John Estabrooks. He comes from the oil industry. And he said that what they know about in America is about 400 years of oil. That's what they know about. He said, well, I couldn't even begin to tell you where they haven't explored it. And the energy companies are not polluting anything. Even the coal industry, of which we have even more coal. They are not polluting anything. So how does that work? We have an agency, like the EPA, that goes back to the regulations and the way the industry was in the 70s, and they write regulations. And when the energy company, or when the oil company says, okay, we met your regulations, they go, oh, no, 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 no. It's got to go up here now. Now you've got to do this, and now you've got to do that, and now you've got to do the next thing, and the next thing, until eventually it is not profitable for the energy company to do anything in America. And that's what we have going on today. So as Obama is talking and lying, saying we have produced more oil under his watch, big lie. Less oil, and the only place that oil is coming from is private property. That's why they want our property. Period. America is the only country in the world where the individual has the God-given right to own a piece of their country. There isn't any place else in the world. So we have become a bad role model. And when they talk about leveling the playing field, they mean bringing America down to a third world country because America cannot be an example for the rest of the world. Otherwise, the Russians may want to have a piece of their country. And somebody else may want to have a piece of their country. America is the only country where the individual was allowed to own and control supposedly, until recently, your land, what's above it, and what's below it. In other countries, I have to get a lease to the land. If I find anything, it belongs to the government. If I want to build something, I can build it. With the government's permission, and should they choose not to renew my lease and my house is on that property too bad for me, I lose. America is different, and that's why all eyes are on America, and all eyes are in our pocket. Because the thought of individuals owning anything that would bring individuals wealth is unacceptable. And they call it not sustainable. I love when they do that. And I love to listen to John Kerry talk about how horrible our social programs are. And then you say, hey, John, what did you give to charity? How much money have you given to charity lately? Ask them, because you will be shocked. See, 
see, socialist, communist, they believe that the government takes care of charity. So if they take out their $10, they're done. Somebody collects tax for them, they're done. They've done their bit. That's not the way conservatives think. We feel if we have and someone has not, then we can share. But it's up to us to decide how much and who, not somebody else. This is another, this is the book that is the plan. This is the book that talks about the land. It's called the Biodiversity Treaty. And on the back table back there, I have a picture, and it will come up in the next map, of what they intend America to look like when this is implemented. It's disgusting. But first, let's go through some of the words. Because remember what I told you. What they say is not what they mean. They use what they call the Hegelian dialectic. And that means if you have a premise that's true, and you want to refute it, you bring in a premise that's not true, and you come up with another premise. Well, how could you come up with another premise if the premise you started out with is true? Doesn't make sense. Again, no logic, no reason, no critical thinking. The thing that we have to learn to do is challenge them. Because they're not used to that. And when you do, they, can't, they don't know what to say. And they can't come up with anything. And they can't say anything because they cannot talk about the, the facts. What they will do is say, oh, Karen, your hair is disgusting. How can you go on stage with disgusting hair? And they'll pick on you. They certainly will not refute a fact because they can't. So they will pull apart your financial records or dig into your history and find out what you did 50 years ago because that's the only thing that they can discuss. Because there is no logic, no reason, and no critical thinking to anything that they say. So when they say that they are looking for international cooperation, isn't that nice? What that really means is globalization. Now, there's a big difference between the word international and global. But they're really good at mixing it up. Usually people in business are looking for an international outlet. They want to do international economics. Why? Because they want to do business with other markets and open up other countries. So when you're doing something internationally with an international concern, that country stays that country. If I'm going to deal with England, I'm not going to deal with China. I'm dealing with England. That's international. Global means one world government under a new world order with the United Nations making all the rules. I don't know about you, but that doesn't give me a warm fuzzy. And I certainly did not elect any of the bozos in the United Nations. And just to show you how really smart they are, they're going to put Syria on the Human Rights Council. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> so they really got their stuff together. They talk about the three E's of Agenda 21, and that is equity, economy, and the environment. What they never talk about is the mechanism that they use to enforce it. Because if they came to you and said, I'm going to enforce Agenda 21, you would go, ah! How do they do that? Education. And they don't talk about it because they're afraid to. Because they know that if you knew what was really going on in the schools, like I did when I walked in the schools three years ago, I almost had a heart attack. I really did. I could not believe it. Teachers can't read and write. How can we expect the kids to read and write? No wonder why Jay Leno or John Stossel can walk around with a microphone and say, do you know where America, what the capital of America is, and some kid is going to go, duh. They're not taught. America starts to them in 1865. How did that happen? Well, that was so they could leave out all our founding fathers, all our documentation, so our rule of law, and everything else that made our country great, and start America with the birth of progressivism. Isn't that exciting? And 
that's what they have accomplished. I wrote a, I could not believe this when one of the teachers told me that. I wrote a letter to the curriculum department of Florida, and I got back a letter from the chief of the curriculum department that said, yes, starting in ninth grade, and, uh, America will, America is taught from 1865 forward, starting with the progressive era. So I wrote back and I said, well, when did they learn about our founding fathers and the Constitution and all of the, the documents and, and war and slavery? How did they know how all of these things happened? And she said, she writes back and she says, well, they'll get a, a lesson or so in their government this is the head of Florida's curriculum department that doesn't know the difference between history and government. How the heck do we expect our kids to know? They use our schools as indoctrination clinics, and I'll show you how they do that in a minute. They use our laws because we were benevolent and we wanted to save the species. Well, they've got groups running around who are all tied to the United Nations, Sierra Club, Audubon Society, and a gazillion other ones, Human Habitat, Habitat for Birds and Animals. Why did they do that? Because part of Agenda 21 said, you have to get non-government agencies to be appointed to write the rules and regulations because if the people knew that their elected officials were writing them, they wouldn't be their elected officials anymore. But if it's a non-government organization, there's nobody that's accountable. So the Audubon Society will go out and spot some owl or some robin or something, and then come and leave something on a farmer's door and say, your 100 acres is no longer usable because this animal is living there. This is what went on in Northern Florida. Northern Florida used to be the number one state for lumber. And because of a woodpecker, lumber was shut down. Florida used to be the number two state for agriculture. And because they want us to buy food from uninspected farms in foreign countries, they regulated our farmers out of business. The fish that you eat, please watch the fish you eat. Do not eat fish from Asia. And if you, I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to go on YouTube and I want you to Google farm-raised fish in Vietnam and see for yourself. Because when I saw that, that was the last time I ever ate fish. Now, we say, well, what can we do? How can we stop this? You know something, folks? It's easier than you thought. And how do I mean by that? We have to go to our local supermarket and say, I want the food from America. I'm not buying this crap. Well, guess what would happen if enough of us did that? And if we called up Governor Scott and we said, why aren't our farmers farming? Why, are, why is Florida orange juice coming from oranges from Brazil? How does that make sense? I only buy food from America. And every day when you go online, you will find some horror story from some foreign country, and then you realize, oh my God, the fruit came from Guatemala. Didn't they have a disease that was blah, blah, blah? Mm -hmm. They hide it, and we're eating it. So instead of eating the good food that's inspected, we're eating the garbage from other countries. Why? to redistribute the wealth of America and to shut America down because they feel, as per Maury Strong, it is their duty to destroy the industrialized complex in America because everybody would want those same awful, unsustainable things. Only education, we can go to the next one, will make all of this work. Only education.
education, and I hate using that, it's really indoctrination. It is no longer education. Education is the ability to make a choice. Indoctrination means that you only can work within the value that has been set in front of you. And that's what is going on in our schools now. Let's move to the next one. This is our educational system in America. And in so not the writings within the book. Yeah, this one is talking about the global food crisis and why we have to depopulate. Well, let me tell you, folks, the global food crisis is also man-made. How do I know that? Well, California, 40,000 acres of farmland from California, the number one farm-rich producing state in the Union, was shut down because of a two-inch fish. The farmers cannot get water because of a two-inch fish. Tell me how that makes sense. Okay, now, there's another one. What happened when there was a tornado in Toledo? What did they do? What was the first thing that they did? Oh, we have to blow the dams over the farmland because there may be a flood. So what did they do? They destroyed thousands upon thousands of acres of the richest farmland that we had in the U.S. They call our children, really great names, they have wonderful names for them, they call them human collateral or human capital. We are considered human capital. What does that mean? We are only as good as what we can produce for the state. And this is in all their writing. They don't hide it. It's right out there. We are also called useful idiots because we're like bobbleheads and we just say yes, yes, yes. And then they call us sheeple. So they change the names when we know what the name is. They come up with a new one. They're very good at that. This is a great book. This is another book that I found in his school. It's called um, Building Fluency Through Practice and Performance. That sounds benign enough, right? Well, if you look at the place where they are talking about the Constitution, they talked about the preamble to the Constitution. And they said the preamble, but then they said, now let's describe what it means. Well, to promote the general welfare really means the needs for housing, education, transportation, health are overseen by our government system. Did you ever read that in the Constitution? Because I probably missed that section. <laughs> then they tell the kids that the labor laws ensure that people work in safe environments and if that they are paid fairly for the work they do. I didn't see that in the Constitution. People's basic needs must be met in the country. I didn't see any of this. None of this. Today, our kids are graduating and 87% feel that it is the government's place to get them a job and to provide housing and health care and a free education. Where did they learn that? In school. Communists must break down the family, God, and morality. <coughs> and man, we are giving it to them and we're letting them do it. And we got to stop. Every single time some ACLU group gets God out of a school or off a public building, shame on us. Our founding fathers put it there for a reason. Separation of church and state does not mean separation of church and state. Then it's not anywhere. It's not in the Constitution. It isn't in any document. It is a made-up term by the communists so that we will not bring God into our schools and morality into our government. And look at what we got by the government that we have now. A bunch of liars. A bunch of pedophiles. <coughs> a bunch of homosexuals, and I don't care about sex or any of that. Keep it home. I'm not interested in it. 
What you do in your house is yours. It does not belong in my house or anybody else's house, and I could care less about it as long as you do the job that you said you were going to do. But no. Remember I said, social programs are there for a reason. They are a distraction. The human brain can only handle one thought at a time. So if I fill it up with a fact, like 2 plus 2 is 4, well then you might learn something. So what I'm going to do is fill it up with a social program and tell you how not to bully. How do the kids learn? What do they learn? <coughs> Nothing of any relevance. Except my family is irrelevant, I hate my country, and God doesn't exist. And therefore, I can lie. We have a liar in the White House. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I know if a lot of you are like me, it's hard to talk to your kids. But one of the things that I always get them on is when he lies. Because you can say, do you believe that was a lie? Well, you said this, you did that. What do you call that? It's not a misspeak. I didn't misspeak. I lied. Call it what it is. He lied. Okay, did I teach you to lie? No. So then why are you going to teach my grandchild as a role model, the president of our country, as a liar? Why would I want to support that? Why would I want to support that person? You have to break down things to the simplest denominator because you also have to understand in school they were never taught logic, reason, and critical thinking. You have to define the words for them. Because one of the, the other things that we just discussed, when they use a word, it means one thing to them and something else to everybody else. So you wind up having a conversation on two different ideologies using the same words. So therefore, you can't have a conversation. So usually when I start a conversation, I say, okay, let's get something straight first. What is a communist? Well, a communist is somebody who believes that you can't have individual anything. Everything has to be reserved for the good of the collective, and the government gets to decide what that is. If you don't determine that in the beginning, and you talk about social justice, which is communism, but social. I asked one of the kids, I went to, I did a meeting like this with a group of um, uh, college kids. And I said, how many of you believe in social justice? What is it? They have no idea. Actually, one kid did, he said, what, some social network, should we join it? <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what they're saying because nobody has defined the words for them. So that's what our job has to be. We've got to get educated. And when we entertain and go into these conversations, we've got to lay the ground rules out just like in the beginning. When you first learn, when your kids first learn how to speak and run and walk. You had to lay out the ground rules. You had to say, don't do this, don't do that. This means this, that means that. She's a, a wonderful woman. Her name is uh, Shirley, Dr. Shirley McLoon, and she is the one that really brought us the modern education that we have today, so we can thank her. At a governor's conference, in 1989, who can, who can tell me, who can give me a guess? Who do you think was the president of this country? Who was the president of the Governors Association in 1989? Does the name Bill Clinton ring a bell? Surprise! Bill Clinton was the president. Shirley McReel determined, her group determined, how we're going to get communism in the schools. Here's how. Students are human capital. All students are considered the same, human capital. The purpose is to 
train students to work. Isn't that interesting? What is the push of education today? School to work. Workforce training. What they're not telling you is that they're training them starting in kindergarten. Because in kindergarten, through the testing process that you feel is a great assessment, that's not the purpose of the test. The purpose of the test is to A, indoctrinate the kids, because they read the paragraph so many times that if it says the moon is made of green cheese, and they have to study that the moon is made of green cheese, then to take their test, then when they leave, what are they going to think? The moon is made of green cheese. So the purpose of the test is indoctrination, and the second purpose of the test will be, once it is electronically monitored, is to find out keywords that will identify a person's character and be able to guide them into the correct training program so they can work for the state. And what's going to happen? Oh, in sixth grade, Johnny wants to be a farmer. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take Johnny and all of the kids who want to be farmers and we're going to take them over to the distribution center and they're going to learn how to work and how to be a farmer. What just happened? We now have created slave child slave labor for the companies that have partnered in public-private partnerships with the government. And we thought slave labor was in China. It's not. It's part of communism. Get them early, get them young, cradle the grave, put them in a slot, and if next week Johnny says, hey, I don't want to be a farmer, I want to be a dentist. Sorry, you're a farmer, you lose. Period. End of story. Sure, we also said that the purpose of education was to transform society from individualism to collectivism. So everybody in the group should be able to participate. So no longer do you get an A for being excellent, you get a P for coming to school and passing, because you can. If I can't get an A, because I was excellent, and he did absolutely nothing, and should get an F, but we both get a P, how long do you think my motivation is going to be to be excellent? Gone. Gone, 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 because human nature is you're going to do the least that you can do. And now they're saying, we want you to do the least that you can do. It's okay to be unemployed because some rich dude is going to take care of you. And that's okay. 87% of the kids in school today believe that the government is there to take care of them. Period. Not their parents, not God, and not themselves. Because it is never their responsibility. It is always Bush's fault. <laughs> Actually, this time it is. Um, this is the one that really turned my stomach when I saw this, the last one. And I'm staying on this because it's so important. Education. Fact-based education. What is fact-based education? The truth is not important. What is important is knowledge of value. Who's value? Value is a movable thing. Value is an opinion. So I could have an opinion that it's going to rain tomorrow. My opinion. My kid is going to be tested on how well that child knows what I know. Because I'm telling you. And heaven forbid that kid says, no, 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 I, I listened to the weather forecast. It's not going to rain. It's going to... No, you'll get an F. Because you have to repeat my value. That's the way education 
is happening now. It's not education, folks. It's called indoctrination. Participation in a UN advocated planning process would very likely to bring out many who would actively work to defeat an elected official if they knew that it was coming from the UN. But guess what, folks? They don't say sustainable development coming from the United Nations. They just give it another name. And they call it smart growth. Everybody wants to be smart. Everybody wants to grow. Let's call it something else. Our tax dollars are being used so that non-government agencies that are creating regional programs will come in and train your elected officials on a local level how to implement Agenda 21 on you. And we're paying for it. We're paying for our own destruction. <coughs> and when you talk to an elected official, oh no, we're not doing that. We're not part of the UN. We would never do that. Okay. Do we pay dues to ICLE? Do we pay dues to NACO? That's the National Association of Counties. Does ICMA, the International uh, City Management Team, do they come in and train you? International. What is an international management team coming to our community and telling us what to do if it wasn't coming from the United Nations? You have to do your homework. You really have to do your homework. You should be looking in your budget and you should be checking to see every item that is paid in your community before you take one penny out of your pocket on a raising taxes. Because you will be appalled, as I was, when I saw how much influence the United Nations has on our local communities. And the regional councils, by the way, that was charged also by Agenda 21. Actually, that came from their sister document, which is called the Johannesburg Implementation Plan. And that one, they tell you how to implement it. And in there it says, we will use NGOs and to form regional organizations to promote a good, clean economic environment. Environmentally friendly. Taking care of the environment. Is that the purpose? No, because when you go and read what they say about regional organizations, the purpose of a regional organization is to get legislation out of the hands of the legislators and into the hands of unelected bureaucrats. Our elected officials are paying dues to an organization that is just like a company that is asking me to train the worker that's going to take over my job. This is what we have in America today. They use a whole bunch of warm, fuzzy words and you gotta go and look for them. Here is our education. Mark Tucker, he wrote a letter, it's called, the, we always call it the Dear Hillary Letter. And in it he outlined what the commission from Eisenhower found. And he said, that the United States must adopt internationally benchmark standards for educating its kids and workers. Internationally benchmark standards. There is only one place that international benchmark standards come from, and that is the United Nations under UNESCO. And in that international benchmark, they teach our kids that they must follow the Earth Charter, which elevates nature above man. Think about that. Nature is more important than man. So this morning I got up and I said to my cat, make me breakfast. <laughs> and I didn't get an answer. And I looked at her and I said, who's going to take care of me when I'm older? And she said, meow. <laughs> How does it make sense? It doesn't, because it's not supposed to. But it sure sounds good, doesn't it? Education is no longer factual. Our kids are not learning facts. They are learning 
concepts of indoctrination, our textbooks that describe America are written by European socialists, and one of our textbook companies is owned by an Islamic family from Dubai. Our textbooks contain statements that state that the only true religion is Islam. In the meantime, we are being told that we cannot say the word of God in school. Did you know that Jesus came from Palestine? How was Palestine a country at that time? I don't, I don't remember seeing Palestine on the map. <laughs> the inaccuracies are unbelievable. The concept is, no, no Palestine. There wasn't any. So, how is that possible? It's possible because the true reasoning is the Islam hates the Christians, hates the Jews, and is devoting their life, if you read the Quran, to eradicating these people off the face of the earth. And I believe we got a Muslim in the White House. Period. 
and we are paying for it. Millions of dollars every year. And uh, they sit in Tallahassee and they write the checks. And when I went there and I said, do you know what is in these programs? The answer was, no. Do we have to know? Should we know? Hmm. You're writing the check with our money. You're giving it to a group of communists to teach our kids how to hate America, hate God, and hate their family, and you don't want to know what's in the textbooks. Why do I want you to tell it happy? But they tell you, oh, we need more money. We have to make a choice. What's the difference where you learn communism? If you learn it in a charter school, which by the way is not new, 1930 charter schools right out of Russia, how to get more people into more school situations so they can train them better to work. Charter schools were in remote areas. Charter schools is not a new thing. Why charter schools? No oversight. More places to promote communism. And we the people think we're doing a wonderful thing. We're giving our kids a choice. They should have a choice. If we don't change the curriculum, it doesn't matter what that choice is. Right. They will not read, they will not write, and they will not understand math. And why math? Because math teaches logic, reason, and critical thinking. And they don't want them to have anything. what I was talking about where the schools are teaching collectivism. February 20th has been designated as Social Justice Day. Our kids are celebrating communism out in the open on February 20th. And when you ask them, what is Social Justice Day? No clue. No idea. No understanding. We have three programs for higher education, and this is why they are pushing the kids into the higher education. So they can indoctrinate them into the International Baccalaureate, which is a license to steal our money, or into the Advanced International Certificate of, of um, Education, or the inexpensive American Grown AP program. But you need to give me more money so that I can educate the kids. It's not the money. It's not the location. It's not the size of the class. It's the content of the curriculum. Our kids are learning all about the UN. Now what is the UN all about? Well, the UN promotes the GIA, G-A-I-A, -A, human religion which means the center of the universe is Mother Earth. And nothing on Mother Earth can be scratched. This is what our kids are learning from the United Nations. If you look at the symbols that are in the Ark of Hope, you'll find that many of them are satanic. The person who gave and donated a large portion of money to the United Nations at its inception her name was Anne, Anne Bailey. She was a Luciferian. She created the Luciferian Trust to help fund, with the Rockefellers, to help fund the United Nations. When they realized the Luciferian Trust was not a good name, they changed it to the Lucius Trust. So that was good. David Rockefeller and, and Anne Bailey are responsible for starting <coughs> They will destroy our economy because they feel that they are charged to. They must. It's in their genes. They have to. <coughs> and they use lies continually to promote it as they shut down industry upon industry upon industry. America is the richest country in the world landmass. We have more natural resources than any other country in the world. We have the largest natural gas reserve that would provide natural gas for hundreds of years. And guess where it is? 
It's in Florida. Does anybody know that? Natural gas should be so incredibly cheap if we use Florida natural gas. But we're not being told about that. Just like oil is off limits and everything else that we want is off limits. Why? Because eventually if I see you and tax you enough, what are you going to have to do with that piece of property? You're going to have to sell it. And you'll either sell it or you'll fold it into a trust or you'll put it into a conservation easement. And all that means is that when you go back and you look up, where does that money go? It's a group that's connected to the United Nations. What a surprise. So while Bill Nelson is now getting millions of dollars to the Everglades Restoration Project, we discovered that almost 70% of the state is owned by the government and by the United Nations and non-government organizations and trusts. Why are we, the landholders, the only ones that are paying the tax? How does that make sense? It doesn't. We have been lied to. There isn't any, any other nicer way to say it. Like I told you, they put the environment before man, and any time you say something, you are environmentally horrible. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. If I can restrict you in some way, lying to you, I'm going to do it, and if you're stupid enough to let me do it, that's your problem. I'm not into it. That's the way they see it. So what must we do? We've got to make sure that we vet our sheriffs, and we ask them point blank. If a government agency comes onto my land, and demands that I do something, and I call you and tell you to get them off my land because they don't have a warrant, what will you do as the sheriff? Will you support me, your, your constituent, following the Constitution, or will you support the government? And if they can't tell you in the next breath, I will support the Constitution and you, then you should say next and get rid of them because they will not be there for you when you need to have somebody there. It's up to us to make those decisions, and it's up to us to ask those questions. <coughs> and it is up to us to hold them accountable and to use the right words. Communism, socialism, social justice, redistribution of wealth, the United Nations taking over the United States, Agenda 21, Smart meters, that's another good one. Smart meters by 2015 will connect to all of the appliances. Why? Because if I decide it should be a brownout between 9 and 12, then guess what? Flip. Or I can call you up and I can say, gee, you're using too much water today, so we're going to shut your water off. In Europe, they don't have air conditioning. They're restricted. My friend has family in Lebanon. They are allowed to have electricity eight hours a day. In Europe, they will live in the same kind of flat. They don't want to tell you, but those are the sustainable developments. 700 square feet, everybody gets the same thing. So a nice thing to do with your commissioners is ask them, do you believe in sustainable development? Oh, really? You do? Isn't that wonderful? Well, do you play golf? Yes, I do. There's a new golf club because golf is not sustainable. And by the way, we're going to shut the air conditioning off in your office because it's not sustainable. And we'll give you, you're going to give us your car keys and we're going to give you a bike because automobiles are not sustainable. And the next time you go out for dinner, don't think about eating meat because that's not sustainable either. And you can go through the list. And they will say, I didn't sign that. Excuse me, is that your name? And here's another one. This one will blow everybody away. Every county in Florida has a vision plan. It comes under the name of Vision 2060 or Visioning or Comprehensive Planning or something. Well, 
how do they know what's going to happen 60 years from now? How did we know 60 years ago that we have wireless things? That we would have phones that you could walk around and hold? You don't know that unless you have planned that person's destiny in advance. That's what centralized planning does, and that's why it never works. Because it never allows for progress, and it never takes in a tragedy. And in all, every single subsidized housing, sustainable development city that they want us to live in, crime is higher, disease is higher, pollution is higher, there's no place to park, and a lot of them in California are empty. It does not work. So I want you to go look at your vision plan in your county, and when you pull it up from your county, type in the words in the search part, private property rights. <laughs> it's not there. How can you have a vision plan for America that does not address our God-given right to own property. Because 60 years from now, they won't. They are taught to accept what the government gives them. Period. This is Sustainable America. This is the new book that they use. It went from Sustainable America to Goals 2000 to Workforce 2000 to No Child Left Behind to Race to the Top, and it's all a model of the Soviet school to work. Everything is the same. They take out a few words, they change a few dates, everything is the same. Uh, this is the is this book, and this talks about the chapters in this book, and it tells what those chapters are about. Here's a list of a few of the agencies that we pay into to give grants to our administrators in our <laughs> government, in our local government, to implement these rules and regulations. And here's more. There's over 2,000 agencies. This is what the map looks like. Those little black dots. That's where humans will be allowed to live. The rest must be vacant as animal habitat. This is what it looks like in a sustainable development. This is where the people live. So actually, there's a road that goes around it. Everything within that area, because it's the only place that has the services, becomes excruciatingly expensive when people want to live. But what happens to the people that own the land over here? Their land is worthless. So as our realtors go rah rah sustainable development, what are they going to sell? There's nothing. There's nothing for sale. Ickley. Every time we talk about Ickley, they change their name. So the name I don't even know what it is today, but it is the organization charged by the United Nations to do the marketing to get into the local communities to have the local communities pay dues so that they can create a program for sustainability for that community. And guess what? That program is the same no matter what community you go to. They are all the same. Nothing has changed. And we pay taxes. Our tax money is used to give to this organization so that they can train our local officials how to screw us out of land. Their goal? Very, very simple. All the money, all the power, all the control. There's nothing left here. And if many of us get killed along the way, well, we're a statistic, so we're too bad. We have a choice. 
And I'm sure that many of you have read about Pastor Moller at World War II. My family was Jewish, and I'm a senior, so I figured either I keep my mouth shut, like some of my family members did, and wind up going to the ovens the same way, or I make a lot of noise, and I'll get to the same place. So I have not shut up, nor will I. And that's what we need from all of you. This is not a Republican or a Democratic issue. This is a vote for America, for our liberty, and our freedom. And we have no choice. None. I get letters from the English Parliament. I can't believe it. In the English Parliament, they're reading my newsletter. In the United States, they don't want to talk to me. And all I get is the same thing over and over again. Karen, don't stop. You've got to get the people to know. They cannot allow this to happen. They have destroyed our country. Don't let it happen in America. The whole world is watching what America is going to do because we are the last hope and they know it. Join us. We are the agendas. Go on our website, agenda21today.com. Sign up and get our newsletter. We talk to agendas all over the country. Things that are happening here are happening in California, are happening in Ohio, are happening in all over. Did you know that we have riots right now in almost every major city that is not being reported on the news? That gangs are going on subways and going on buses and beating up old elderly people like, like us or the people that are handicapped and it's not being reported on the news. This is their test. This is how they start. Remember the 60s. Those riots didn't get there all by themselves. We were trained. How do I know? Because I was there. I was there. I marched against Vietnam because I hated the war. They got smart. They said, we'll make it a draft, and if you become an educator, we'll exempt you from the draft. So my generation of all the people that hated everything became teachers, and this is what they're doing. When I went back after the march, they said, you guys did great, you marched, it was wonderful, but now we have to go to phase two. I said, what's phase two? We have to teach you how to write. And they said, excuse me? <laughs> oh yeah, we're going to teach you how to write because we have to destroy the country. Said, no, thank you. I didn't like the war, and that's all I care about. I love my country. This is what the educators have done to our teachers who can no longer read and write. To our congressmen who, when I was vetting one of them and I said, well, this was in Section 10 of the Constitution. I said, where is your pocket Constitution? When was the last time you looked at it? He said, oh, I don't read that. What do I have to look at that for? This is running for office. And then my other favorite one, and I will leave with that, when they start talking that the Constitution is a living, breathing document, you get them to admit, is the Constitution the laws of our land? Yes, they'll all agree to that. Well, let me ask you a question. If you were playing football, and I was the referee, and every time you kicked the ball and moved the goalpost, how would you feel? Well, you can't do that. Why not? It's a living, breathing goalpost. I can move it wherever I want. I can change it whenever I want to. It doesn't work. It only works when we follow the laws of the land because we are all bound by the same laws. They are not different for me. They are not different for you. They are not different for our children. They are the same. Victory is our only option. We have no choice. Thank you. Thank you.